Hi, everybody. This is Bill Simmons. Once again, your next episode of Pacific Coast uh, Broadband Connect. And we've brought back our resident entrepreneur uh, for his monthly update of technology, Greg Hayward. Greg, uh, congratulations number once again for all of the projects and all the opportunities that you're surfacing and the regional exercise in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, when I'm sure there'll be topics of more conversation in the episodes to come. But today we're here to talk about blockchain. And, and other than knowing it's a word, I'm not sure exactly what it describes. So why don't you just dive in and talk about the technology itself and then we can talk about what it means for the smart city. Very good. Thanks for having me and thanks for all the support the Broadband Consortium is provided me and the community over the years. We really appreciate it. So as far as blockchain goes, it's been around since 1991. And it is basically a variant on a database. And it really didn't gain popularity until Bitcoin figured out how to utilize it in 2009 to make a commodity of it. And so we're not talking about a new technology. This has been proven through but there are pros and cons to it. And the cons generally rest in the expense of how much it takes to run a Bitcoin model. So, you know, a cloud is where you store your data traditionally, which is not on your computer. You know, and a lot of people have all of their information stored locally and they do backups and those kind of things, but large corporations and such, they generally rely on big databases like AWS or Azure, those kind of things. Well, blockchain has taken the database model a step further and added basically a layer of security and a layer of authenticity. So that's why you can have a blockchain with a cryptocurrency tied to it because it is validating the cryptocurrency itself and the transactions. A database cannot do those kind of things. And the Bitcoin acts as a ledger to record all of those transactions. I remember some years ago, well, probably a decade or two back, there was a lot of hype about the uh, internet protocol IPv version six. Sounds like blockchain is new and improved. It, it's doing an awful lot of the authentication that IPv6 was supposed to have done that really never took hold. Is that, about, is that accurate? That's very accurate. You know, this really is internet 3.0. And if you look at the opportunities that blockchain represents, it is very much like the internet was in 1997. A lot of people have a lot of aspirations and it's not really defined at all where the potential max is out. So, you know, there are a lot of different verticals that will be benefited from utilizing blockchain both in reducing costs, increasing efficiencies, and user satisfaction. So I, I see a home in a smart community maybe having an, a bunch of attributes, and those attributes would be unique in a blockchain address. And, and so you could get very customized in terms of who you are, what you do, what you need, the information you get, the services you get, all driven by the fact that you can get very granular and specific in a blockchain address. Am I using the right words? Is that is that picking it up right? Absolutely. And a block is created when you put all the data that you want to into something. So like food, right? A, a uh, onion is grown. An onion is picked, an onion is shipped, an onion is delivered. The onion gets somebody sick. You look at the block tra blockchain transactions back, you can identify each step in the process down to the field of where that onion came from. There's a lot of accountability. So if you place that in mortgages or health records or any of these other verticals, the accountability goes way up. And you know, contact tracing during the pandemic, this is such an important thing. Uh, the Bitcoin model, I mean, excuse me, the blockchain model really suits that well. Well, that, that to me, in terms of looking around the applications we have today, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of the potential. That's correct. Where this is going to go. Right. And as the economies of scales and the transaction rates get faster and all the things that are cons to the blockchain model become pros, 
it will definitely branch out in ways we haven't predicted yet. Think about if you have a high-end luxury vehicle, especially a historic high-end luxury vehicle. You can put all of the history, the provenance, the images, the previous owners, everything in that block. And then when you go to sell it, you transfer that block to the new owner who then adds their information to that and then it carries forward. You cannot go backwards to try to amend or cause fraud because the blockchain relies on a vast network of users and systems and they need authentication. So if somebody tries to propose amending it in a way that's not legitimate, they will shut that down. Greg, are there people to go to or a community that uh, provides support or is there a, a whole, uh, if somebody has an idea or they wanna innovate in this space, wh where do they connect? There's a lot of different blockchain models. The one that I'm really fond of at this point is Devio. They have uh, 8 million transactions per second as compared to like eight transactions per second by uh, Bitcoin's blockchain. Uh, they're much more focused on what the ESG, which is environment, social, and government impacts the businesses are making. And they're going to create a cryptocurrency that is more aligned with a healthier model. It's sustainable because as gas prices go up and inflation goes up, it's going to be very hard for the other models to be able to endure. Well, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about this as time goes on because I don't understand it, but I know that it's going to be life shaping and, and earth shattering and it's going to be, you know, a trend for the future that's going to shape the future. And so I, I, I think I feel like I'm just getting started and, and it's a I'm breaking out of a fire hose, but I appreciate the fact that you're holding it. So <laughs> any last comments before we go and we'll, we'll look forward to a, another segment in the, in the near future. Uh, but thanks for getting us started. Oh, my pleasure. Anybody that has an interest in this, I would say look, uh, you know, do searches for blockchain, cryptocurrency, ESG, those kind of things to see how they're all interrelated. There are a lot of opportunities to sit at the table. You just need to find your place and realize that there is a lot of Amazon.coms or Googles or all these different startups that are just in their infancy that are taking advantage of blockchain. They're going to be big players. And so investing in them may be prudent. Thank you, Greg. And once again, Greg Hayward re is appearing. Re he reappears here quite regularly to talk about the future, smart cities, what it's going to look like and what we should be thinking about. Blockchain is one of those things. And we'll look forward to continuing the conversation in the future. Greg, thank you so much. Always my pleasure, Bill. Thank you. And thank you all for watching us once again in our weekly updates. We'll look forward to sharing with you our next episode next week.